Hey guys, Josh here and welcome back to History of Seasons, Pioneers of Olive Town. In today's video I would like to share some tips and tricks with you that I've discovered while playing the game. Hopefully these will help you getting started whether it's your very first Story of Seasons games or if you are a veteran. And yeah, hope they will be helpful so let's just get started. So the very first tip I would like to give you guys is in regards to the hammer. So you might know that the hammer can be used of course to hit the rocks and to clear these little trees as well. But there are a few other uses of the hammer that I would like to show you. So the first one I would like to show you is if you till the soil and you feel like you messed up and you just want to remove it, you can use your hammer to do that. And you can also do that if you've placed a seed by accident, which is what I think is really useful. So for example, if we place a potato seed right here, but you change your mind, you want to place it somewhere else. If you hit with your hammer three times, your seed will actually come back as you can see in the left corner right here. That's a <laughs> good way if you mess up your garden, you can actually get your seed back. But you just have to be careful because if you water your seed and you wait for the next day, you won't be able to get back your crop. It will just go to waste. So if you do this trick, make sure you do it on the same day. And this can also be done with the trees. So if I'm planting this little cherry tree right here and oops, I put it at the wrong place. So I can just hit it three times and I'm going to get it back right here. So same for the seed. You just have to make sure that you do it on the same day. And another very useful thing you can do with the hammer, so you'll see on your farm a lot of these puddles. Of course, you can clear them with the bucket. Once it's cleared, you'll get some treasure. And if you just leave the hole like this, it will fill up automatically on the next day. But sometimes you really need the space now to decorate and move stuff around your farm. If you use your hammer, you can hit it three times as well. And ta-da, it's just fixed right away. All right, so I would now like to talk a little bit about cooking and I'm in Levitt's house for a couple of reasons. So if you come in his house over here, there's a table and you can see dish requests from Lavet. So these are all dishes that he would like to have. And if you give it to him, you'll get some rewards. So sometimes you get makers and other valuable items. So as you can see now, he's looking for coffee. So let's just give it to him. And I'm going to get almonds, cocoa and a cherry that I can then use for other recipes there's five difficulty levels for these requests and every time you complete a level you'll unlock a new list with more difficult recipes but also more interesting rewards also in this game you can actually cook in any kitchen you don't have to be at your home so for example i'm in lovett's house right now and i can use his kitchen and i will have access to all of the ingredients that are in my fridge in my place and also of course the ingredients that i have in my bag right now so in this game, there are a few different types of dishes. So there are salads, soup, main dish, dessert, and others. And they all have different effects and uses. So I will go through them one by one. So the first one is the salad. As you can see, I have five hearts out of 20 for now. So let's eat a little vegetable salad and see what happens. So as you can see, I got a heart and a quarter. So it didn't give me too much energy, but my total went from 20 to 21 hearts. So when you eat a salad, you'll get extra hearts. And depending on the quality of the dish, uh, sometimes you'll have one, two, three, maybe more hearts. Next, let's eat a soup. So I have this mixed soup right here and let's see what happens. So I got the same amount of hearts, a little bit more than one. So it it's not too much, but as you can see, my hearts are now shiny or golden. And this is actually increased endurance. So my stamina will decrease more slowly when I do chores. So this is very useful as well. But you might have noticed that my extra heart from the salad disappeared. And this is because you cannot combine the effects of a salad and a soup together, unfortunately. So you have to choose wisely. And next we have the main dish. So I have this fried fish. So let's see what happens. So this gives me about five hearts. So the main dishes are what are going to give you the most energy. And I kept the effect from the soup. However, as you can see in the top left corner, there's this little icon that shows that I'm full. And now if I try to eat a soup or a salad, I just can't because I'm full. So if you want to benefit from the effects of a salad or a soup, make sure you eat these before your main dish. And then there's the dessert. So I have this sweet potato right here. 
it's a dessert and I can still eat it even after the main dish. And I made another dessert just to try and you can eat more than one dessert so you can eat many many desserts after your main dish. However, you cannot eat snacks like bread or you cannot eat drinks like tea. So these have to be eaten before the main dish as well. Alright, so Lavette just kicked me out of his house because it's getting quite late. Just one more thing is that the effect of the soup and the salad are temporary. So as you can see, the effect of my soup is now gone. So they only last for a few hours. So make sure you eat these at the right time and make sure you eat in the right order as well. Alright, so the next tip is all about transforming your milk and eggs correctly. So, as you may know, there are two types of chickens in this game. So, there's the regular chickens and the silk chickens, and they lay different eggs. So, you'll get these brown eggs from the silk chickens, and these white eggs from the regular chickens. And if you put them in the mayonnaise maker, you'll get mayonnaise. The big difference here is that the brown eggs will actually give you two mayonnaise, while the regular eggs will just give you one. So if you have a limited amount of makers on your farm, I definitely recommend prioritizing the brown eggs as you'll get way more mayonnaise and you'll be able to make more money that way. Milk works in a similar way, but there's three types of milk in this game. So there's the cow milk, the buffalo milk and the goat milk and they all have their own specialty. So if you use the cheese maker, so as you can see, if I put the cow milk in the cheese maker, I'm just going to get one cheese. If I put the goat milk, I'm just gonna get one cheese, but if I put the buffalo milk, then I'm gonna get two cheeses. The same for the butter maker. If I put the cow or buffalo milk, I'm just gonna get one butter, but if I put the goat milk, then I'm gonna get two butters. And here for the yogurt maker, uh, they're actually all the same, so I just use the regular milk for yogurt. So if you transform all of your milk every day, it does make a huge difference. So make sure you put the correct milk in the correct maker if you want to make the most money. So now I'm just going to wait until all of these are ready and we're going to check how much of a difference it actually makes. All right, so let's compare very quickly the different prices that you will get. So if you just transform one normal milk into one normal yogurt, you'll see we'll go from 176 to 211 which is still a good difference but if you put the buffalo milk and the goat milk in the proper makers let's see how big of a difference it makes so one buffalo milk i can sell for 245 but if i put it in the cheese maker and i get two cheeses i'll then get 454 which is almost double the price so it is quite a big difference same for the goat milk so just one goat milk by itself is 192 but if I have two butters, I get 422, which is more than double in this case. And one silk chicken egg is 164, but if I have two mayonnaise, it's 300, which is almost a double once again in this case. So just keep that in mind when you transform your products to make sure you use the right makers. All right, so for our next tip, let's head to the city hall. So while you play this game, you will unlock titles by completing achievements. And what you can do with these is actually when you come to this little box in the city hall, you actually get rewards for each title that you've unlocked. So you complete these by doing just tasks like leveling up your skills or getting a certain amount of money or certain friendships and very basic things like that. So you'll get a lot of these while you play. For each one, you're gonna get a reward. So for example, here I've got some perfume and a very common reward will be these medals. So there's copper medals, silver medals, and gold. So let's take all of these and I'm gonna show you what you can do with these. All right, so the whole purpose of these medals is actually to sell them for money. So the copper one, you can get 100 G each the silver one 500 each and the gold one 1000 each so as you can see right now i just made 6100 for doing pretty much nothing so especially at the beginning of the game i feel like it makes such a big difference and i definitely recommend you go take a look at the box at least every few days and it's really gonna help you making money at the beginning of the game and sometimes you'll also find valuable items such as makers and other very interesting things Alright, so the last thing I would like to talk about is how sleeping works in this game. So basically, depending on when you go to bed, it will affect when you wake up and also your energy level on the next day. So let's just start. So right now it's 9.50. I have one heart left. I'm very tired. So let's see what happens if I go to bed before 10 p.m. So I woke up the next day. It's now 6 a.m. So I slept for 9 hours and I have all of my hearts. 
So no matter what, when you sleep before 10 p.m., you will always wake up at 6 a.m. with all of your hearts. And now let's try to go to bed after 10 and see what happens. So I just woke up at 7, so one hour later, and I have 17 hearts. So as you can see, my hearts are not fully recovered, which means that from 10 p.m., you won't recover all of your hearts the next day. If you sleep at 11 p.m., this is what you get. So it's now 8 a.m. and I have 15 hearts and a half. If you sleep after midnight, you'll wake up at 9 a.m. And as you can see, I have a little bit less than 14 hearts. And now I just went to bed at 1, so I woke up at 10 a.m. And I have a little bit less than 12 hearts. And if you stay up until 2 a.m., you will pass out automatically like this. But nothing really bad happens, you just wake up at 10, so it's the same as if you slept between 1 and 1.59. But you have a little bit less energy, so as you can see I have like 10 hearts and a half or a little bit more. So that's pretty much how sleeping works, so the later you go to bed, the less energy you'll have on the next day and you'll also wake up later. So if you always go to bed at the top of the hour, your character will always sleep 9 hours. So this is why I recommend maybe going to bed later, like between 50 and like 59. So for example, if you go to bed at 9.59, well, you'll wake up with full hearts at 6 a.m. in the morning. So you'll basically sleep eight hours in one minute. But if you go to bed at 10, then you'll wake up at 7 a.m. with a little bit less energy and you'll have slept nine hours, right? So yeah, I always try to go to bed before the next hour starts. All right, so these are pretty much all of the tips and tricks I have for today. I hope these will be helpful to you. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. If there's any tips and tricks, or if you'd like me to cover something more in details, please feel free to let me know. Please leave a like and subscribe if you'd like to see more Story of Seasons content like this, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching, have a good day.